I really love natural environments. Just love to be out in the woods. When I'm out in a natural environment, I'm looking at the big picture things as well as the detail, just the, kind of the way some moss might be growing on a, on a stone or on a log. My ideas from our sculptures come from almost anywhere. A lot of my sculpture ideas come right from this property that I, that I live and work on. A lot of them start with nature and natural forms. My family always loved nature. My mom's paintings are all about nature. So I got that from my family upbringing, but also just loving to be out in the, in the woods or the fields and observing things that, that grow. I'll see a tree, a tree branch or a leaf, a um, shadow, a cloud form, a shell, all natural things, and they start generating an idea in my head of what a form might be. If you look at nature, there's not many straight lines in nature. It's very flowing, organic, and, and my sculptures use that. The material that I use is wood, and that natural material has some imperfections in it. It kind of demonstrates that nature is, is not always perfect, but I like the character that those small imperfections and variations in the material give to the final piece. I have a little dish full of stuff that I've collected that isn't sculptures, but could be sculpture sometime. And I'm always sketching, I sketch ideas and thoughts they're just kind of a form or a line or an idea that I thought they're, they're kind of uh, rolling around in, in what I call my world. My interest in sculpture comes from my architectural training and background where buildings are really three-dimensional sculptures. The way I do sculpture is architectural in the whole process where once I get a form visualized, I uh, sketch it and I do some architectural drawings and then I lay out and cut out individual pieces, each one slightly different than the next. And then I build those up into a form that is more like modeling. But there is some carving because I kind of take those little stair steps off and, and make the surface smooth and uh, uniform. When I laminate the pieces together, I've set the limits of the form. You can't put any more on, and I have to be very careful when I'm working not to take too much off because you can't put it back. The technique and process that I use of laminating wood comes from a philosophy that I got from, uh, ultimately from Frank Lloyd Wright, architect who used a series of small elements to build the whole. So I started thinking of using plywood to do a sculpture with that same basic idea. Certainly nature is consistent with a Wrightian philosophy in that if you take a tree, it's made up of a whole lot of fibers that have little voids between them. When the wind blows, those fibers work together and keep the trees standing. So why do I do sculpture? I think I do it because of the challenge in it, actually proving that I could achieve a vision that I had in my mind, making that come to reality. There's a lot of satisfaction in that. When I finish it, I generally know a good deal about what the color and the appearance of the surface is going to be, but I never know exactly what that's going to be. And when I get the first coat of sealer and start to put the finish on it. Those colorations uh, come clear and it's really enjoyable to me to see where they are because they aren't always as you envision. A lot of people who are artists name their pieces. I don't like to do that. I like the viewer to take from the piece whatever the viewer is inclined to take from it. I can't communicate uh, what my pieces are about in words because if I could, I would write and I wouldn't do sculpture because it's hard work. If there's any overriding theme of my sculptures in terms of communication, it's just kind of the exuberance and the, the enjoyment 
of creativity, the enjoyment of nature, the enjoyment of life.